Descartes' rule of sign says that if we let f of x be a polynomial function, let's say a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub 1 x plus a sub 0 uh, be a polynomial function with real coefficients, then we know the two things. The number of positive real zeros is either equal to the number of sign changes of f of x or is less than the number of sign changes by an even integer. So for example, if we had a polynomial function and we, we check the number of sign changes as we go from left to right, and then let's say that there are four sign changes, then the number of positive real zeros is either equal to four, two, or zero. Or let's say if there were three sign changes, then it's either equal to three or one. Now, the other thing we would know is that the number of negative real zeros is either equal to the number of sign changes of f of negative x, or it's less than the number of sign changes by an even integer. So what you would do for that is you'd plug in negative x into the uh, function and see what are the number of sign changes. So let's look at an example of this. Uh, so for this one it says to use Descartes' rule of signs to determine the number of positive and negative uh, real zeros for this function. In this case we have f of x is uh, 5x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x minus 9. So first uh, for the number of positive real zeros uh, we look at the original function and see how many times does the sign change as we go from left to right. So the first term is positive 5x to the fifth, so it's positive, then it goes to an, a minus, so there's one sign change there, and then it goes from uh, minus to plus, so there's another, another sign change there, then it goes from plus to minus, so we would have another sign change there, but then it goes from minus to minus, so the sign doesn't change there. And again, from negative or minus x minus 9, so again, the sign doesn't change there. So that's telling us that there are three sign changes for f of x. So the uh, number of positive real zeros. is either, um, in this case, like I said, there is three sign changes, so it's either three or less than that by an even number, so less than by, let's say, by two, uh, or one um, positive real zero. Now, if, if there had been five uh, sign changes, then it would have been five, three, or one, okay? Now, for the number of negative real zeros, we look at f of negative x, so plugging in negative x wherever we see x, now one thing to note, let's see, so um, if you raise that negative x to the fifth, that's now negative, so this will be negative 5x to the fifth. But the negative x to the fourth, when it's an even power, remember that a negative raised to an uh, even power is positive, so it actually doesn't change. So this will still be just uh, minus 5x to the fourth. And that will be negative x cubed, and then times the 2, so minus uh, 2x cubed. And again, in the negative x squared, since that's an even power, that still would just be minus 3x squared and then minus a negative x, so that would be plus x, minus 9. So if you notice that only the uh, terms with odd uh, powers uh, d does the sign change for the term. So let's see, we go from negative to negative, so that doesn't change. Then negative to negative, still doesn't change. Negative to negative, still hasn't changed. But then we go from minus 3x squared to plus x, so there's one sign change. And then we go from plus x to minus 9, so there's another sign change. So there's two sign changes for f of negative x. So that tells us that the number of positive, or sorry, negative 
real zeros is either two or zero. Now again, if it, there had been, let's say, six sign changes for f of negative x, then it would have been six or four or two or zero. Okay, so one thing about Descartes' rule of signs, it doesn't help you find the zeros, it just tells you the number of uh, possibilities for the positive or, re or negative uh, zero. So let's say, for instance, if you're doing this one and you already found like three negative or uh, positive real zeros, then you know you don't have to look for any more positive real zeros because there's only at most uh, three positive real zeros. Or let's say if you had already found two uh, negative real zeros, then again, you don't have to look for any more negative ones because there's only at most two. Or let's say you know from here that there's at least one positive real zero because it's either three or one, so there's, there is at least one uh, positive real zeros. So again, it doesn't help you find the actual zeros, but it does help you limit uh, when you're looking for it to if you had to continue on looking for positive or negative ones.